All right, moving on, we got 7A, which is the secondary hull top. And there may not be a lot of wiring on this, but there's still gonna be at least three. You got two lights there for the nacelle pylons, and you've got the light at the bottom near the shuttle bay opening. And as with all the other parts, first thing I'm gonna do is wash it in hot soapy water to get this film off. Okay, so I washed it in hot soapy water, and I got that film off, the release agent. And if you guys remember, the lights that are going to light the saucer pylons, uh, excuse me, the nacelle pylons on the sides, I had to drill out because they weren't, um, they weren't big enough to hold the three millimeter bulbs. But these look pretty big, so we're gonna see if they fit into these holes. If not, I'm gonna have to drill them. Okay, so I drilled it out just a little bit for the um, three millimeter bulb. If it's not gonna focus for you, but it actually went in and drilled just enough for it to fit. So it's aiming at the pylon. So that being done, we can go ahead now and we can put on, um, start putting the primer and the paint. Okay, so the primer on the inside, it's all nice and dry. Now we're ready to turn it around. Now we're going to do the outside part. All right, so it had a chance to dry. You can see it's it's looking pretty good. The whole thing, inside and out, is primed. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the inside color, the bright white. Um, actually, that's the finish coat. This is the inside, the bright white. And I'll show you what that looks like when that's done. Okay, so it's all nice and dry. The inside is painted in the finishing coat. And the outside is nice and dry. It's ready for the finished coat. Um, when it comes to this, I'm thinking about grinding down these nubs and then lighting it, putting lights there. I don't know where I've seen. I don't know if it's the A or the refit. Where I could have sworn I've seen lights here. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure what these are. Um, if these are phasers, I've never seen phasers. Um, from the aft section before. If you remember originally this was the observation deck and it was changed either this or a little further back towards the shuttle bay opening. Um, so I think it would look pretty cool probably with yellow lights. I don't know I'm gonna have to think about it but either way I'm gonna do that before I put the finished coat on it. Okay, so I was given a lot of thought, and I was like, well, should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? And I figured the perfect bulb that would go in would be the three millimeter. You can see it's just about the same size. And I was thinking about different colors, and I could have sworn I've seen in yellow um, in these areas. Now, like I said, I don't remember if it's the A or any other starship, um, but I think it would look cool. I think it looked really good and it would just give a little bit more detail um, for the eye to take in once she's all done and lit up. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna dr grind down these nubs. I'm gonna use the Dremel and then I'm gonna drill the hole and I'm so I'll be able to get the, uh, the light through. And I'm gonna do this before I put the finish coat on. Okay, so I took the rotary tool, and what I did was I ground the nubs off, and then I drilled through, and um, I put it so that the lights will be able to fit in. 
because it's, it's hard to film and do it at the same time, but um, the lights will fit in nicely. Let me um, put them in and I'll show you what it'll look like. All right, so I'm holding the, the lights in the back. These are the three millimeter, and you can see that they took the place of the nubs, and they're gonna light up, and the little white one is gonna be part of the LED, and that's going, the one in the middle I'm talking about, and that's gonna be a 1.8 millimeter, so it's gonna be a lot smaller. And that's gonna be one of the strobes, so the yellow ones will be on all the time. And now I'm ready to clean that area up, and then I'm gonna go put on the, um, the finished coat of paint, that is. Okay, so what I decided to do was put a little bit of primer on the areas. It's all nice and dry, the bottom is finished, and we're ready to put the finished coat on. And of course, my trusty Rust-Oleum. And when that's all done and cured, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so the paint is nicely cured, and you can tell it's ready when it's not tacky anymore. It takes a while for the Rust-Oleum um, to harden up, but it does make a really good protectant for the model. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to um, apply the paint masks, and um, we'll put the aztec on the top. Uh, first thing we're going to do is cut out the pieces and as usual we're going to remove the excess material around the masks. Next step is to put the tape or frisk it over the top um, and cut the pieces out and I'll show you what that looks like when that's done. Okay, so once the backing is removed, you carefully overlay the masks onto the hull, making sure they're even. And as usual, using the tampering, the tamping tool, get all the air bubbles out. And I like to leave a little bit of extra of the tape so you can have a starting point to peel it back. So I'll peel the tape or frisk it off the masks and we'll be all set to start painting. Okay, once the first skit is off, the masks are all set. You can start removing them and applying the paint. Of course, I'm going to mask off the other areas of the ship just so it doesn't get painted. Um, but when the rest of the masks are on and I'm ready to start painting, I'll show you um, what it looks like. Okay, so it's masked off, and it's ready to start painting. Now, as usual, I'm going to get a piece of wax paper, put it here, and every piece of the mask that I remove, I'm going to mark with a uh, marker, um, and then reapply it so that way there, I know that uh, that section has been painted. So, I think we'll go ahead and start, and I think we'll start with my favorite color, the blue. Okay, so I just sprayed the blue. I don't know if you can see that. And I marked off the sections. And I'm going to give it a while to dry and to set. And once it's uh, thoroughly dry, I'll reapply the masks and uh, take off the next set. Um, we'll probably do, let's do the green next. Okay, so I reapplied the paint masks and took off the new ones, 
and I marked them with marker and I painted green as the next color. So once that sets and that's all dry, we'll do red next. Okay, so I just sprayed the red. And I don't know if you can see that. We'll put the pieces on as soon as the paint sets and it's good and dry. And then we'll go ahead, we'll put the last one on, which is the gold. Alright, so the masks are off, and we're ready to start putting the whites in. This is going to have to be cut, a small part of the section for the wires to pass. Let me just give you guys a little bit of, a little word of caution on the, um, the paint masks. I don't know if it's because the Rust-Oleum, it, it, it's too good, and it makes too hard of a protective shell, but it seems that when I peel off the masks, no matter how careful I am, some of the paint comes seems to come off with them. There's a couple of places that I noticed where the paint of the pearl had come off. Um, I mean, it still looks good, and the whole part of having a pearl on there is so not so it's so noticeable, but when you look and say, oh, that's pretty, but um, I'm sure when I put the future coat, the finished clear, it'll, it'll bring them out more, but just just be careful when you pull off the uh, the masks so what I'm going to do now is the plastic pieces that go in there's a couple of pieces for the lights that light the nacelle pylons I'm not going to use those I'm only going to do the um, the three millimeter bulbs that are going to come through there so let's go ahead and we'll start with that and um, I'll do the wiring and as usual I got to solder the resistor on and get the uh, wires ready Okay, so the resistor is a wire, uh, welded on, soldered on, excuse me, and then I went and I put the wires, of course red is positive and black is negative, and before cementing them into the hull, I'm just going to make sure that they work. Okay, so I got them hooked up to a temporary power supply, and as you can see, they work fine. It's always a good idea to test them <laughs> before you cement them or hot glue them into place. And I just wanted to make sure these work. I know it's a lot of work doing these lights, um, but you could always get the pre-wired ones where you wouldn't have to solder the resistors on and the wires. But um, these are the ones that I'm using. So we can go ahead and solder them into the hull, and these will be all set. All right, so I glued part 216 into place a little light on the back and I'm going to use a 1.8 millimeter light because if you can see it's going to go up and be glued into that position and it's got to be smaller um, because there's not a lot of room back there so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solder the resistor on and put the wires on and show you what it looks like when I test it. Okay so the resistor is soldered on and the black positive and negative wires are soldered on. It's ready to test. Alright, the 
it's tested, it's okay, and um, it's ready to hot glue into the secondary hull. Okay, so for the last um, lights that we got to do, for this section anyway, um, is for the phaser sections. And I decided to light them because I thought it would look pretty cool like they're getting ready to fire or they're firing. Um, and I'm going to use three and a half millimeter yellow bulbs. And I think it would look cool. So let's go ahead and going to solder the resistors on and the wires. And when that's done, I'll show you when I'm ready to uh, test them. Okay, so these are tested and working fine, and that does it for all of the soldering for the lights, at least for the top of the secondary hull. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start to uh, hot glue them into place. Okay, with the LEDs for the section all finished, all we got left to do is now is do the, um, the light strip to go inside. See, I'm going to put the light strip right there. And you can see, like I showed you in a couple videos before, you can see it actually tells you where to cut it. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to wire the negative and positive, uh, excuse me, solder the positive and negative wires on. And I'll show you what, it's look like, what it looks like when it's ready to be tested. So I soldered the leads onto the end, and I got it hooked up to the battery just to make sure it works. And you can see, working perfectly. Now that concludes all the soldering for the top part of the secondary hull. Now we can go ahead and we can start to glue um, all of the lights in a light strip into position. So I hooked up all the positives and all the negatives and I just wanted to test them real quick just to make sure they were working. And let me see if I can show you the bottom without it coming undone from the battery. You can see the, the lights, the lights for the pylons, the rear light, and the phaser cannons. They're looking pretty cool. Okay, so I put the lights out. You can see the nacelle pylon lights for the tops, looking pretty good. Everything hot glued into place, they're not going to go anywhere. The phaser cannons, the phaser banks glowing because they're getting ready to fire or they are firing. And the light at the end. You can see it's pretty much uh, ready to glue the secondary hull. I'm not going to put the decals on yet because you know they got the uh, those lovely big blue decals that go around the pylon, uh, the nacelle pylons. What I want to do is after everything is glued, because remember I still have to glue the secondary hull parts together. So once that's all done then I'll go ahead and for the finishing touches when I do all the seams and everything I'll put the decals on. But for the most part the upper part of the secondary hull um, is done. So now we're ready to move on to the next step. 